am so excited today that we have Yolanda McAlevey with us. And actually, do you say Yolande or Yolanda? Well, it's Yolande, but I tell everybody Yolanda because it's just easier. And, uh, and then uh, real close friends call me Yo. So Yo, I love yeah. that. <laughs> Well, right. we are thrilled to have her here today as part of the Westlake Village Art Guild studio tours. And um, Yolande is both yes. a Thousand Oaks Art Association and Westlake Village Art Guild. So we're really lucky to have her here today to, oh, to share from you. both. So um, thank go you. ahead, Yolande, I'll let you take it away. Okay, I'm, um, I'm on my desk. I'll show you my desk uh, in a little bit after I start talking. My husband, when we were make, uh, dating, he made me the most incredible desk ever in the world. So he's always been um, the biggest support I've ever had with my art. So anyway, um, I grew up in the valley. So I'm a San Fernando Valley girl. Um, I have one brother and uh, my dad, which is significant, was a conceptual artist with Hughes Aircraft Company. He did lots of technical art. Well, I ended up getting that talent, but then um, I went to Catholic school where there was no art classes. And I had to, uh, you know, we lived in Reseda. I had to take three buses to get to Panorama City to go to uh, St. Genevieve. And I finally said, I'm kind of done in high school, which of course I didn't realize my parents would be glad because they didn't have to pay for it anymore. So I went to Reseda High and that's where I met um, Mr. Gill, which was my art teacher. And I never knew that I had talent until, you know, to him. So, you know, I just really appreciate high school art teachers, so. Anyway, so that's uh, my growing up years. And um, my parents were depression babies, so they uh, would not let me pursue art as a career. They said, you will not make any money. You need to get into a job that you know pays the bills. So I, um, I actually left at 18, but I did listen to them and I did drafting. And let me see if I can do Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to share uh, the twists and turns of my journey as an artist. So um, this is a sample of what I used to do for drafting. It was kind of boring. It was very technical, 3D, you know, perspective. And it was all about whatever um, we were making at Teledyne, I mean, at Lytton at the time. And then I also learned airbrushing. And this is um, before the computers, sorry, my light is in the way, where we would have to airbrush certain things out. And then uh, I learned camera work and um, how to then, you know, uh, work with the changing components for buyers that would need to, you know, need to see. And it was all military. And I did that for about a year. And I met, well, actually, I worked in a giant room with all men, you know, and they did all the drafting and all that kind of stuff. And I happened to be on the end desk where one day some bosses came through and I, I had no idea who they were, but I was working on my artwork and because I was going to school at night as well. And um, lo and behold, a couple weeks later, I got called into the office and one of the um, big bosses who had seen my work um, called me into the office and he said, you don't belong in drafting. I'm taking you and I'm gonna train you how to be a technical illustrator. He said, your art is, um, you've got a talent and it's being wasted here. So I then um, learned from Lytton and then I went to Teledyne and um, I would do, obviously it's technical artwork, but I was in charge of the newsletter. We worked in the graphics department. So I would have to put all the type together, put in the entire newsletter, create the art, get all the photography, work with the cameras. 
and uh, we would do our once a month newsletters as well as doing the artwork for um, whatever is needed there. And at the same time, I'm gonna go real slow so I don't get anybody sick. Um, I learned airbrushing so that I could be, uh, here, let me see if I, hang on, I gotta put this over here if you can see this. This is um, airbrushing. So I wanted to be an illustrator and I wanted to be more of the advertising, you know, go in the advertising direction. So I did that. Now, I don't know if anybody's familiar with airbrushing. Whoops, sorry, everybody. Um, but it's a lot of work because you have to have um, masks. And this particular one, I had 10 different masks where with airbrushing, you have to do different colors at a time. And then at the very end, I would do the, uh, you know, the brush work. So that's some of the work I did. And then um, also uh, did this Mickey, pretty large, and that's all airbrushing. So this was kind of my journey out of the drafting, uh, out of drafting. And then let me back up. I'm gonna show you this, this desk my husband made for me. At the time, uh, we were just dating. And this is a full size maple door. And he did all the brackets and he made it so that I can lift it however high I want. And then I have my, um, my drawers. And I learned a long time ago, especially with watercolors, never put your coffee on your desk if your desk is tilted. So yes, I, I learned the hard way with that one. So now that's where I keep my tea and my water. And then let me see, we went from airbrushing to um, homeschooling and I'm going to switch my camera now just so I can talk. But um, when I when I stayed at home, you know, we had three kids and I was a stay at home mom. I always painted at night. Uh, and it's very interesting because I met a group of women that only homeschooled. And I thought, well, that's silly. I want to, I just want to paint all day and send my kids away, right? Well, the more I checked into it, the more I thought it was a really great idea because um, my first child was a boy, active, you know, a little wild. And at the time they were putting the kids on Ritalin, you know, to start calming them down. And I thought, you know, I really don't want to do that. So I figured one year at a time and I'd homeschool. Well, um, <laughs> I homeschooled my daughter all the way through high school. I, um, I homeschooled my boys through um, junior high and uh, both of them through junior high and they went in in high school. And during that time, because of the art, the, our particular homeschool group, is a very huge group in based in Thousand Oaks where they understand that one person, a parent can't do it all. So we had classes for everything and they had asked me to be the high school art teacher. And so I spent uh, a summer researching and writing my own curriculum. And so I, uh, I created one through four years and I did drawing and I did painting. And I have to tell you, one of the reasons I really took uh, just a shine to that job was because of my high school experience with the art teacher. You know, there's not everybody fits into the same box in a public school, you know, with academics or whatnot. And I've got to tell you, it was, um, I did it for just over 10 years and it was the best experience of my life. Those kids were amazing. And I got to um, just really be a, uh, an important part in some of their lives, you know, where they just said, I don't know what to do. Um, I, I don't know what direction to go. I'm not an artist. Well, um, for years later, I would meet my students everywhere, 
and they were so thrilled. They'd say, oh, I've gone into computers. I've gone into photography. I've gone into graphics and I'm an illustrator. So it was just a really important kind of time teaching them. So anyway, I love doing that. And uh, let me show you also, as I was doing that, I was continuing painting. Now, master copies are really important. I don't know if anybody's done them before, um, but this is my, it's 30 by 40. And this is my master copy of The Gleaners um, by Jean-Francois Millet. So um, I just love that period of time. I love him. I love impressionism. Um, obviously from the work that I have done and my drafting, I'm technically just so nitpicky and spot on. Doing more of the impressionistic work is difficult for me and it still is a journey. So I, um, I tend to, you know, uh, I don't know, I'm still just working on that. And here's a large, um, these are about five foot panels by 15 inch, each three panels. So that's one of my oils that I've done. And I don't know if you could see this because of the lighting, but I started, oh no, the lighting is pretty bad. Um, in high school, even though my parents didn't want me to go into painting as a career, my dad bought me my first watercolor set. And so at 15 years old, 16 years old, that's what I began doing. And um, I actually didn't pull out a whole lot of those pieces. I keep them downstairs where there's uh, less light. Uh, but as we go into the other rooms, I I've taken over two bedrooms since I don't have my own studio. Um, here is one of my first pieces in oil when I took it in college. And I've always kept it here because it's like, oh, I like this, I can do this as well. But see, I'm super realistic. I'm not as impressionistic. So you can see that it's still, I'm still working on that. And here's some, you know, some smaller pieces that I've done my attempts at being a little more impressionistic. Uh, here is a large piece of my daughter that I just finished. And then here's a couple of in oils that I've just finished. Now getting back to the studio, I don't know if you can see, I have two half size cabinets that I store uh, materials and like this cabinet right here, I store my acrylics and uh, whatever supplies I need. Uh, I also have, because I got rid of my flat file years ago, it was just too large of a piece of furniture. I now store all my watercolor papers and boards upright over here. Um, I have this armoire which I keep um, all my, my two backpacks ready to go for plein air and I have my hats. So I'm, I'm always ready for that. And then when we've traveled like to visit my daughter in Arizona, I have this here with all my watercolors. So I have, you know, my sketchbooks and everything, my pencils. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go no matter what. Here's my, my travel cases for, you know, when I go plein air painting. And I also have extra frames here. I also have over here, this is a, a really cool tool chest. It's all in wood. My husband, again, bought for me. And this has all my airbrushing equipment and, uh, you know, just whatever, whatever supplies I need, it's in here. All right, here is, I'm sure everybody has this, you know, stacked artwork, stacked canvases, different things. Um, and then over here, this is important to me. I don't know how everybody else is, but I love art books. 
I, I feel like I can learn so much from the masters and I have the Wyeths, um, I have Ala Prima, you know, I just have uh, like a Juliet Aristides. And so those books are just so, so important to me because I read them and I study them and um, always wanna learn. Okay, there's my chair. And this is my, so this is my watercolor room and my design room. And right here, I, you can barely see it. I'm starting to work on a, a larger watercolor and those are figs. Those are gonna be figs in uh, a vase. So, so that's gonna be in grays and greens. And here's my setup. This was my, my dad's poor, um, you know, poor people set up. He cut a, peep, a couple pieces of masonite board for me. And those were my watercolor palettes from 15 years old. And I still use those. And then these are more of my colors. Okay, I'm gonna take you through. I'm not going too fast, am I, Wendy? No, so far so good. All right, so here's the uh, walkthrough bedroom. This, you'll have to excuse the bed. We had it over here when my daughter and her husband were over. Um, but here is, this is what I call my easel room because it's north light and I have just a lot of room. This is a, a roll away that when my father passed away and my mom just recently passed away, uh, we were clearing out the garage and I, was just loving the fact that I can finally have a roll away. And so I keep all my, all my paints, everything's super organized. And I even have, you know, you know, you have the screwdrivers, whatever, whatever is needed. I keep on this roll away. Here's my palette. I like, I, I got one of these, um, savers. I'm sure a lot of a lot of people have these. And I went ahead to a glass store and I had a piece of glass made for the inside of it because I just like working on glass. And my palette changes all the time. And usually I'm in order of what I'm working on, but I've been reworking a couple paintings. So uh, when I need an extra color, I'll just pull it out. You know, me, I just, my husband laughs. He always says, when is there enough of paintbrushes? And I said, you can never have enough paintbrushes. So I have a ton. And also I keep all my um, paper towels. I actually like to fold them and get them ready. So I'm just grabbing them when I need them. So this is a, a large, you know, one of my, um, one of my easels. And then uh, this is a fun idea I've learned. This is a little wet, I'm gonna take it down. It has definitely seen its, um, its use. This is a piece of board, this easel right here, it, you know, you can't put anything small on there because you've got no, you know, no firm backing behind. And this piece right here, you know, it sticks out. So we made a piece of board that I can just set here and I added some holes and then I can put small paintings and I can put larger paintings Then I can take this off. And I did that for this one as well. I also use um, reference material with my iPad sometimes. And so I have the stand and then I just recently got this chair. It's a kneeling chair because I stand all the time when I paint. I have my mats, but sometimes my back does hurt. And so I'll, I'll kneel and paint. Here's another um, recent water, um, pardon me, oil that I've been working on. And this is also a rework. And right now I'm trying to problem solve and rework this piece as well. Uh, I have a little section here. I had to move everything around because until we get this bed out of here, 
Um, I, I usually have another table to do my matting and then I'll have a computer here. But this is, um, I have all my canvases. I have all the extra canvases in a row. I have my canvas, uh, loose canvas, so I can make my own canvases. And I have my Gamsol and Terpenoid underneath. And I like this, I learned this from another artist just because I can see what I have and what I need to purchase, you know, so that if I go out, like when Bev calls and let's go plein air painting, or if I go with TOAA, I know exactly I have materials to work on. And uh, that's why I really like this roll away too, because I keep my extra paints there. Okay, here is um, another one of my watercolors. I'm sorry, the glass, it makes it pretty hard to see. But as you can tell, I'm just super realistic. And uh, this is one of, this is a very old painting. See, you can hardly see it, but um, this is actually my favorite painting from everything I've done. It's, uh, it's simple. And even though there's realism there, it's just, I just love that piece for some reason. So that's one of them. Uh, watercolors will always be my favorite love. And I have another one over here. And then of course I, I'm going slow. Oh, as I pass this, I don't know if you've already noticed this. I tape things on the wall as reminders, um, like this artist, super loose, and this this beautiful beach scene. Whoops, I just lost it. Anyway, I'll pick it up. Uh, I just love the looseness of some artists. And I, I write down notes as I listen to podcasts. And I, it's always, they sit up here as my reminders of what I want to accomplish with my art. And then I'll show you just a piece over here. My hallway pieces because of the light with watercolors. And then this is just a, a technique of, uh, this is actually mixed media, where I took the piece of paper, I took tissue paper. So first I put lots of color in the background, just a ton of watercolor wash. I crumbled up the uh, tissue paper, put on large books. And then once it dried, then I came in here and I um, did my watercolor, a little bit of pencil, and then I took a toothbrush in order to get um, the speckled kind of look to it. So that's kind of a nutshell, in a nutshell, all my work. But um, I don't, I don't know what else. Let me see. Oh, this was another. Uh, my father made this. This, so I keep my camera, and I keep other supplies here. And my father made that, that piece of furniture for me. And it's just kind of nice between my husband and my dad, they kept me going with my artwork. So if there's any questions. Very cool. Well, thank you. Uh, do you sell your work anywhere other than? Uh, you know what? I'm just so I feel like I'm such a newbie still to this. I'm not a business person. So being part of TOAA and Westlake Village has given me the opportunity to um, sell. Actually, I did um, commission work, people, friends. And in fact, uh, I had done a commission years ago. And unfortunately, I can't show it to you. Uh, but years ago, I did a watercolor, large watercolor painting of this woman and her two children at Descanso Gardens. And um, all these years later, she got back in touch with me just to keep in touch. And as we were chatting, I told her that uh, there was a photo reference she didn't choose and because it was in front of a bathroom. The kids were at a water fountain in front of a bathroom, but I had, I just love that piece. So I did a large watercolor of it and I framed it and I had it 
all these years. And so uh, when I was chatting with her, I told her about it and she says, well, I want to buy that one too. So I just mailed it off a week or two ago, which was really fun. So um, I need to actually get down to the business end of it because I would love to sell my work more, you know, just on a consistent basis. Yes. Well, yeah. what we should all do between both guilds is probably let each other know that this show is going on and this special thing to show your work here and there. And well, right. I know you're showing your work at the Simi Conejo, uh, I forget the whole name yeah. of the my doctor's yeah. office starting on the 10th or 12th. Yes, yes. And um so hopefully people will be able to go in there and have their eyes checked and look at your work at yes. this time. Yes, yes. Oh, and I did forget to mention that I had done, and it's downstairs, I didn't bring it up. Um, another, I love the harvest. That's, I've always loved the harvest. That's probably why I, cho I chose the gleaners as my uh, master copy to do. And I love vineyards and everything about it. And so I had done a, an oil of uh, one of those grapes that when we were, you know, going through and I entered it into the Oil Painters of America Society and it actually was chosen to go into the national show in Utah a couple years ago, which was huge, huge honor. And at that same time, that particular year, um, I also entered it, I think it was six months apart, but I entered it in the no ops, you know, national oil and acrylic and painters society, something like that. And so that was also chosen to go into a national show on the East coast. So, you know, there's definitely encouragement there. I just, yes. well, good I, for you. I didn't, your work is absolutely gorgeous and oh, it can be you. going everywhere. Are you also a member of the California art club? Oh, yes, I am. Yes. Oh, good. Uh, it's interesting, though. I, I have had conversations with Beverly and even my husband, who's not an artist. I have, um, obviously, from my watercolors and some of my oils, even my airbrush, the airbrush, I'm so technically motivated. I love detail. I love realism. But meeting more plein air artists and even having some um, well-known artists uh, make derogatory comments on my art because of the photorealism, it kind of put me into a loop, you know, kind of a downward spiral, if you will, where I thought I need to become something else. And so I have, I have, 20, 30, 40 paintings, you know, where I'm trying to be something I'm not. Mm -hmm. And now I'm still trying to find myself and, um, you know, work on trying to get as an artist member of California Art Club. But that's difficult because I don't know, some people get in, but a lot of people aren't getting in. So I don't know what to think about that. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, and it doesn't mean that you're not a fabulous artist just because you're not getting in. It's, yeah, you know, it's a lot of years, I think, and helping out and getting your name there where they're, you're now their friend and that kind of thing. So right. Yeah. It, it's hard. As Beverly knows, she's put in a lot of effort and just recently yeah. got in. But, um, yeah. You, you could easily be in there with them. Your work is oh, you're sweet. absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, well, if we want, everybody, um, you can go ahead and turn your cameras on and your sound on if you want to ask a question to Yolande. And um, we can wrap up with a little question and answer period. No questions. <laughs> no questions. That would be me. No question. <laughs> hey, do you know where you buy it? My question, because I love that rolling. Uh... The Yeah, the roll away. It's actually a tool chest for like in the garage. Do you think you and get you, it at Home Depot or something? You, yes, you can. 
Okay. You can get it at Home Depot. You can look online. You can get better ones than Home Depot. Um, I forgot. I'll have to uh, get the name of that one. But that is just a really nice roll away. And on the side, there's a bar. Uh, but I was hoping to twist my husband's arm and have him put some sort of a, a holder for my paper towels, you know. Oh, so, yeah, so I can do that. But yeah, that's huge. The one thing I've never gotten used to is having all my paints in front of the easel, you know, like Scott Christensen, some of the big name uh, painters, they do everything in front of them. I guess just because I haven't had that, I've grown used to having it on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yolanda, you're amazing. I mean, you oh, are, you're so you are Miss Organization of the Year, the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to ask, when you paint, always keep clean? You never oh, make no. a mess? So oh. nice, super nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, um, in fact, uh, that room got cleaned up because sometimes I'm working on several paintings. But uh, generally speaking, I can't have a lot of stuff in my way. Uh, I paint standing up, so I don't want to trip on anything. And I want to be able to paint my, find my paints. And uh, before I had this roll away, which I just got this within the last six months, uh, I had everything in a, um, like a toolbox. Well, you, you waste time, you know, looking for the right color. Right, so right. that's why this tool chest has been just an invaluable help because I have, I have all my colors laid out. I know exactly what drawer to pull open when I need it. Well, look, very nice, clean and very organized, beautiful painting too. Thank you. Yeah, I am definitely gonna Google rollaways and see if I can get one. Mine, like you said, are all in yeah. boxes and drawers. Yep. And it's just to try to find that certain yellow, it's, oh. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, you can go to Home Depot. They have the cheaper ones. And I mean, like anything, tools and whatnot, you can spend a fortune. There's better ones, but honestly, I like the one my dad had because the drawers are narrow. Mm -hmm. And so they're perfect for paint tubes. Yeah. 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 And then where they, he got it? He made it or he bought it from? He bought it. Yeah. Like exactly. a Home Depot or Costco? Or Amazon? Uh, let me, I'm going to move back out and I'll show you. Okay, Amazon or the... No, you can do, okay, this is actually a famous one. This is a well-known, it's called a Kennedy. Oh, okay. online? Okay. online. Uh, yeah, you can go online. Uh, you can go to Kennedy Tool Chess and it, see it's on rollers. Okay, Kennedy. And, and yeah. see... You see my drawers. Okay, so they're super narrow on top, which is perfect for my paints. Um, I do have, you know, exacto knives, um, other equipment. This is actually stuff that was my father's that I just can't bear to get rid of. And, you know, just larger, even larger uh, drawers that I haven't used yet. The Kennedy tool chest? Yes. Yes, and see, it's got a it's got a bar on this one side, and it does have wheel locks on the bottom. Oh, so works. I can I can just roll it anywhere I want, and it's just you know this is uh, what an eighteen inch long pallet, so you can see how nice the top of the work right. surface yeah, is, yeah. and Perfect. it's got this lip right here all the way around, so nothing. You know, like even this, it's not going to slide off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a so. size. That, that's a, they have a size, your, your size. They have all different kinds. This is an old one, but Kennedy is still in business. They make a really fine product. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's really nice. Really yeah. Nice. Now, the, you know, they have them at Home Depot. They have them at... Um, Costco, whatnot, and and usually you'll get a top piece for tool people who do uh, wood, 
you know, garage work or right, woodworking, right. Or, you know, but uh, definitely all you need is this lower piece. And this actually comes, uh, this comes to my hip right here. The edge comes to my hip. So it's a perfect size, you know, from where I put my paintings to, um, to working. Right. Perfect. And then, uh, you know, like I said, my father made this, which is nice to have um, another work surface to look to the left just Dude. so I can keep some extra stuff on here and I can grab from both sides. Wow, that's beautiful. So, Lund, when you're painting, do you have uh, the, your palette in front of you between you and your painting or do you reach over to the right? No, I reach to the right all the time. I did talk to my husband about making an attachment for the front of my easel and then having a special glass made so I can put my paints there. Um, but I have to design it and then he's got to find time to do it. So, um, but for right now, I am so used to do this. I've done this for years. I also have, um, pardon me, I am gonna just hang it over here. This is my large, uh, my large wooden palette. And I'll, I'll use that like when I'm, uh, you know, on my kneeling chair, just to give myself a break. And mm -hmm. this is my small, very small easel. That's the one I got when I was 16 and it's still going strong. So anyway. Yolanda, how do you do, how do you use your kneeling stool? <laughs> okay, you, you get on, okay. So right, the top part is where you sit and oh. then that down below is where you put your knees and oh. it actually relieves stress on your back. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I about, find if I stand the whole painting, my back is killing oh, me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so I got these really nice pads to step on. And I have a second one so that when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm painting, I'll stand here. And then I step over to do my paints. But about eight years ago, I fractured my back. So um, for me, sitting down for a long time is not an option. But my, my back does get tired and kind of sore. So that's why I got the kneeling chair, which is not a lot of pressure on my back. Um, but I do, here I'm going slow, so sorry about the, the, <laughs> the bed there. Um, anyway, I do have this tall chair. I don't know, for those of you who sit, I have this from Relax the Back. This is, uh, you can fill it up with air. That's for my lower back. And then I also have this seat cushion right here. And uh, that helps my back as well because um, I love working at this desk, especially for watercolor. I, I've never had the, um, well, I guess I never got used to sit uh, standing and painting watercolor. It's always been sitting down. So that's, that's kind of my setup. And then I, I love this desk because it's so big. It's the, it's the entire seven foot of a door. And I can put all my supplies to the right and to the left. And I still have a really large surface to work on. Perfect. Great. Do we have any last minute questions? Because we're starting to run out of time. Um, if not, well, Yolanda, you have a lovely studio. I enjoyed your, you. I enjoyed listening to you, and I'm just so amazed. You're so such an inspiration, you and Ben. Oh. I just you guys, <laughs> and um, you guys are amazing. Oh, you're you're so, sweet. so beautiful. Thank you. I'm hoping to get something very large someday. Like when. <laughs> 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 Right. Thank you for doing this. Uh, oh, I'm Helen. I'm unmuted, but you can't see my hand. <laughs> I just want to say this is the most inspirational one I've seen. And oh. I can't tell you how much it meant and how much I appreciate what you've done and showed Thank us. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very I'm going to look into that tool chest. That's such a great idea. Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, you know what I've noticed is uh, 
a lot of times you don't find, I mean, there's good things in the art store, but there's better things when you look into machining yeah. and other things. This, I have to show you this again. This is, this is a beautiful tool chest that my husband bought me. Wow. Uh, it, and it's, uh, this is actually for machinists. I just took out my oil paints from it and put it in the roller way. But um, who makes this? This is it's a, Irish a Gerstner. Yeah, yeah, it's a Gerstner. So it's it is a very um, it's a very cool thing. So all these all these supplies to keep you organized is so helpful. Yeah. And what is it? The, what is the uh, spell Gerstner? Can you spell? Um, let me see if I can e written out in G E R. Where is it? Oh, I can find it. There it is. But I, you know what? Um, here, let me. I'll write it down. It's just called H Gerstner and Sons. G E R S T N E R and Sons. But um, my husband got this for me years ago, and it's. It's not very cheap, so, um, but any tool chest you can get is, is a help. Also on my desk, I have an automatic uh, pencil sharpener and I have my tapes. I have everything here. So um, generally when I plan a project, a large painting, I work on composition. So I wanna make sure I do my sketches here. I can um, kind of mess around with my composition and my values before I, I head into what I call my easel room. <laughs> oh, and, and one more tip for you. I don't know if there's any watercolors out there, um, but I have this box, okay? And I keep mothballs in your oh. paint because I paint with red sable and moths will, they'll Ooh. eat your paintbrushes. Oh no. Yeah, so um, this is a, a, it's a pretty good, pretty fun little box here. I, so, and then this just opens up and I just keep one of the uh, mothballs in there and it just protects my brushes. So. Oh. Wow, that's cool. cool. Yeah, good <laughs> idea. Yeah, so that's it. All righty, Yolanda. I can't thank you enough. It's uh, your work is absolutely spectacular, and oh, it's you. definitely fun to see where you create and how you got started. And uh, you're amazing. I mean, we all look oh. up, look at your work in awe. So oh, thank um, you. So organized. Oh my god. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, so, I, I, you know. I think like most of us, you get a small amount of time to paint and then wasting time looking for stuff and Perfect. spilling stuff. I mean, yeah. I've been painting since I was 15 and trust me, I've made every mistake in the book. This piece, I gotta tell you really quick, see this piece, I was almost done with it. And I was on an itty bitty desk that had a slant on it and I had my paintbrush at the top Oops. and it was like two o'clock in the morning and it went ding 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 across the black with white so then i spent the next hour repairing that kind of damage so trust me if it was a mistake i made it and i learned from it so being organized does help <laughs> thank you thank you well, thanks thank you. Rhonda. And before right. we go, uh, Yolanda, I'd love to, I know you've already entered. I'm hoping everybody will hurry and get their artwork into the Westlake Village yes. Open Jury Show. The deadline is a few days away. The last day to enter is the 7th. So okay. um, please don't forget to do that. Um, and we have uh, James Griffin, Griffith, Griffin, uh, Griffith. 
uh, coming on the 18th. He's doing a demo for us, and uh, it's going to be really interesting. He paints with the La Brea Tar Pit Bar, which to me sounded very quirky, but his paintings are absolutely gorgeous and sepia tones, and it's, it's incredible. So you won't want to miss that, and that's complimentary of the Westlake Village Art Guild. So jump in on all the stuff we have going on and um thank you yolan so much yes. for today and um uh, it makes me want to get started and go paint so yes uh, enjoy your day everybody it's a all good right. day, day. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you thank you bye, bye. bye. and we'll bye. see you all soon yes okay. bye. 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 bye bye bye